we are frugal in our organization, so you'll see these are a little outdated, but I still hand them out until we run out. Um, how many people are familiar with Boys and Girls Club? I know quite a few people in here are. There's boys and there's girls. Yes, there is. Um, the club started in, in Basalto, where I am, in uh, 1968. It ran for four years with total volunteers. Um, and it, back then it was a boys club. My parents happened to be involved with starting the club back then, so it's been around for a long time. They uh, finally saw the light and brought in girls. And then uh, the organization started the Alton Club as a unit. That uh, club has spun off, so the Boys and Girls Club of Alton is a standalone. Uh, and since I've been there in January of 2000, we opened two additional sites. One down in Brooklyn, Illinois. Does everybody know where Brooklyn is? Yeah. If you know where Brooklyn is, it's not a good thing. <laughs> Brooklyn doesn't have really anything in that community except strip clubs. Uh, there is one like candy shop. There are churches in that town, so there isn't much for those kids. We have a site in the Lovejoy School. They prefer to call their community Lovejoy rather than Brooklyn um, just because of the reputation. We serve almost 90% uh, of the kids that attend that school, which is less than 200. We serve kids from kindergarten to 12th grade there. And we have been at that site now for, uh, this is our 10th year. We also had opened the East Alton site under another grant program. Um, sadly, we closed that site this year. We needed to be in the school, and we were uh, pushed out of the school. We were trying to get back in there, couldn't get that worked out. We were at the church across the street, um, who hosted us Open doors. through the summer. And then um, the grant funding required us to get back into school, so we lost the grant funding and we decided we had to close that site down. Couldn't maintain it on, um, with the finances that our club had. So <clears throat> we have continued to serve uh, our two locations. This past year we served over uh, 1,200 kids between the three sites. In Bethalto, which is, is our primary location, we average about 170 kids every day. Uh, we are a bus stop for the school district, so except for the high school and the middle school, uh, we have like a line, never come to the club between about 2.30 and 3.30, because you'll get stuck. I mean, the whole road kind of closes down and the buses just drop droves of kids off. We serve as an after school program. Uh, that's probably our primary responsibility during the year. Uh, the kids come in, they can do homework. A lot of times kids have had enough of school, so they really just want to run <coughs> wild. We uh, are so busy that we rotate kids to different areas. So every child is either doing homework or reading for a part of that 45 minutes that they're there. We have a games room, we have a gym, we have an art room. Um, we just finished a remodel through a Lowe's grant that we got, so we expanded our uh, power hour, uh, what we call power hours, our homework room and computer lab. So the kids are really excited about that. That allowed us to use our old space that was the power hour room. will now be a conference room for some of our leadership clubs. Some of our middle school and high school have a leadership group. big part of what we teach those kids is community service and giving back to both their club and their community, and that's been key. We also offer some arts programming, not as much, but we have volunteers that come in and instruct in that area. And then we do healthy lifestyles, which is really everything from a smart girls program teaches girls about taking care of their health, uh, positive attitudes, dating, things like that, to Passport to Manhood, which is a similar program for the boys. We have everything from bicycle safety to drug and alcohol awareness programs. So those are the things that we do providing services. But what I wanted to share with you today is we just finished up sponsoring Families for Christmas, like you talked about. And I think that really tells the story of what we're about. We were able to adopt five families, which included 15 kids, this last Christmas through the help of <clears throat> local service clubs, my board members, um, the sports tap in Alton. Uh, Ricky Evans is a cousin of mine, and they saved the extra gambling money 
that people didn't cash in their tickets. So he gave me $300 the week before Christmas to buy gifts. Um, the American Legion, uh, in default on the member of the Legion Auxiliary, they support us each year. So we, we went out and did shopping, bought clothes, gifts. Every one of those 15 kids got a coat. But I want to tell you about the last family that I was able to adopt, <coughs> sports staff, to give them money. There's five kids in that family. It's a single mom. Uh, she works afternoon evenings. So without her kids coming to the club, there'd be five kids at home unsupervised. So we provide a real service. She doesn't get home till 9. So <coughs> someone else comes and picks the kids up and takes them back home. So they are home. We're, the, we're there until 7.30 each night. And all five of those kids are there until 7.30 every night. That's where they want to be. That's where they can get their homework done. That's where they feel like somebody cares about them. But these kids have been kind of distant. They started coming during the summer. Um, so when I had the opportunity to, to finally track mom down and ask if she wanted us to sponsor the kids, we always ask for a list. We want all their sizes. We want to know what are their needs, then what are their wants, and then what things do they like, colors and you know characters or whatever. So I got the list back, and I almost cried because on their need list was coats, socks, underwear. Oh. I mean, that was what they, all those kids needed. They added under once, boots, jeans, clothes. So we were hard pressed under the likes, they put some things that they liked to do, sports. So when my shopper went out, she's like, what, what toys? They gotta have toys, what am I gonna buy for them? There was nothing on that sheet that they said that they need, you know, that they could <coughs> What's toys. their age group? They run from seven, to 15. So my shopping was really good. And she bought all sorts of things. But I'll tell you, the week after Christmas, there's no buses running from school. So those kids who they live in Cottage Hills, the kids, um, the boys at least, have bikes. They rode their bikes to the club to show off to me what they got for Christmas. And then this week, when the, uh, one of the girls came in, she came to my office and knocked on the door. She still had her coat on. She had been there like 20 minutes. She had to show me her puffy coat. Then she posed and showed me this new sweater, new shirt, new jeans, new boots, and she had brought her emoji pillows that they had gotten her. She brought them in her book bag so she could show me those pillows. I mean, just, it, that's the part that you think, you know, we have kids here every day, and a lot of times people think of Bethalto as more affluent. There are so many kids in our community and in our school district especially that are needy, uh, that don't have, and that would not have had a Christmas sure. without people supporting them. Um, and the other part of that is they wouldn't be getting their homework done either if they didn't have a place to go after school, where a staff person's asking them and checking their homework and making sure they get it done. So it's just one of the things we do, and we, Sometimes don't remember what the benefit is, but when a kid comes in and wants to show off what we've done for them, and it's amazing because the staff have said the behavior problems with two of those kids in that family have turned around just in the week since Christmas. It's like they, I told um, all the donors who gave money, I wrote them a letter and I said that, you know, you give a gift that keeps on giving because they've got warm coats, they've got new clothes for school, but more importantly, they have the gift of knowing that there's somebody out there that really, really, truly cares about them, that's not related to them, and that doesn't have to care about them. So I think that's one of the benefits of, I get to see that every day, but sometimes we lose sight of it. So, and you know, you did the same thing by adopting a family, you know, sometimes realize the true impact of what that means to a family. So. I appreciate all that service clubs do. Um, anybody has, you know, a need to do volunteer work, we always have opportunities for that do service hours. at the Boys and Girls Club. We get a lot of people that are required to do service hours. I do, I do provide that service as well, but anybody who just wants to do it altruistic, we can uh, always use volunteers. Anything from playing a board game, kids don't seem to do that at home. They love when somebody comes and plays chess, or teaches them a board game, or plays cards. Helping with homework, if that's not your thing, reading books to the younger members. Any of that is a welcome. Super. Q and A or a cafe? Yeah. <coughs> what big question you've always been wanting to ask the Boys and Girls Club director? 
you get fun, do you get funding from the United Way? We do. We're a United Way agency, which I should say in a speech. Don't turn this video in. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we get about 15% of our budget comes from United Way. It's a small portion. We do a lot of fundraising. And do you have an annual fundraiser? That the we have a three annual fundraisers. <coughs> we sell Reese and Gray Blankets, which we just completed, probably our hardest fundraiser. Um, we have a golf tournament that's usually Mother's Day weekend. We have an auction that's coming up here that's supposed to be February 10th. We're trying to push it by a week because we have another community group in town that's got a conflict. They're doing Cosmic Bingo <laughs> on our night, and that's a tough one to compete against. So they said they couldn't change their date, so we're trying to push it by a week. But my auctioneer, I rely on my auctioneer. Whatever Rob Hinky can do, that's what I got to do. So. <laughs> That's a big dinner auction, and we held it here. It's a fun, it's a fun time. Well, thank you, Kevin.